Good day. This, what you're looking at, is OpenStreetMap. It's basically a database and not actually a map. It's just a database where you can put in all kinds of information. Then you can subtract this information and you can do with it whatever you want. In this case, we subtracted information to generate a map from that data. That's why it's called OpenStreetMap. It's open data and it's streets on a map, it's being generated. But the fact is, it's just a database. So this is a map where you can do practically nothing with, except you, you can move around, you can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, the more you zoom in, the more details you see. Uh, but even at the highest level, there's only so much you can see. It's not really much what you can see. Um, it's not even 1% of all the data in the database. So this here is the um, application we're using to update the map, how we enter information on the map. As you can see, we, we add street signs um, here. In this part here, you can see um, destination signs we can add. Um, this is the name of um, the street and some information on the street. Uh, then you can see here the destination signs, how they are mapped. Um, then you see here the jeepney lines. You can also render those jeepney lines. But again, apart from the fact you can render these jeepney lines, which you do here, there's not much you can do about it. So here you see there's a city Kamkari jeepney line, Lourdes Dominican jeepney line, uh, Asin Hot Springs, Asin Road, uh, Nagilian, uh, Nangarisan, excuse me, St. Louis. Uh, here is a jeep line to the dump site, Lantang, uh, Marville, Long Long, Cason Hill, and you can zoom out. Um, as you see, as you zoom out, eventually you only see the red lines. So these are the jeep lines in Baguio, most of them anyways. <coughs> and uh, there's also here the jeepney stop points. So people can find the places they want to go to, very simple. But this is about it, it's just a map. So in this video I want to show barangays what they can do much more with OpenStreetMap. So I'm sure most of you have heard about it. QGIS, this is the latest version, 3.32 Lima. And again, you can open the tile map here. The more you zoom in, the more details are revealed and it's exactly the same as on the website. There's literally no difference in it. Um, yeah, you can zoom in more and then you see some house numbers, you see here some paths and steps. But you cannot do anything with it, right? So this is where QGIS comes into play. Oh, I shouldn't have closed that. In QGIS you can install a plugin and the plugin after installed, it's here on the vector available. And it's called Quick OSM. There's really a lot which you can do with it. Uh, but I made a preset. This is the preset here, and um, I'm not going into the details in this video about how to do it and what to do, because that's going to take a lot of time to explain all of that. Uh, it's probably multiple videos. So we just run the preset I made here for Barangays, and um, it's now downloading the data. So right now it downloaded the trunk streets, the primary streets, now it's secondary streets, tertiary streets, uh, now the residential streets, unclassified streets. You can see on the left side here what is done. It's now the surface, now the tracks, the footways, now the footways which have tactile paving, steps, steps which have a handrail, path, which means it's just dirt, uh, poor boundaries, based on data from the assessor office, barangay boundaries, based on data from the assessor office, the Baguio boundary, also from the assessor office, then the barangay labels, poor labels, 
uh, building references, building house numbers, building lots, buildings with reference lot and house numbers, the TANOT, barangay halls, and right now, this is going to take a bit, right now it's going to download every single building in Baguio which has been mapped rightfully or wrongfully because not all the data is correct but all of the buildings which are on the map and do not have any address so they don't have a house number they don't have a lot number they don't have a reference number um, they have neither of that which means this is the majority of the buildings in Baguio right now and those are being downloaded now it's going to take a while so we've got to wait for it. But um, I made this preset, basically every barangay can just copy this preset. And there's a lot more what you can download here. So just for the sake of argument, you can download information about the parks, you can download the information about the drain in the, cis, in the city, you can download the information about parking spaces, about the jeep lines, about the jeep stops timetables, about market stalls, um, the schools, the health centers, the official hospitals, all of that you can download. But I'm not going to do that here because, um, again, it's multiple videos if I have to explain everything here. Um, yeah, let's stay in my area here because I know most most about my area here. This is uh, Irizan, St. Carlos Heights. And um, let's disable all of this for now. You can also group this. So right now we only have the streets. We can also close the background map. And as you see when you zoom in, these are all the streets and the names even small alley names, um, stuff which you don't find on Google. Uh, Google says this is just a road, and this, this road here does not exist. The road connects here, that's what Google says. So with your car you can drive here, and then you go here uh, from this area to Ad Road, and this is how you can get back to uh, Carino Highway, which is of course bullshit as you all know, that, that's not how it is. There are steps here where only people can walk, there's a handrail along the steps. There are steps here with a handrail, here's just a footway, then here are steps again. Um, so Google does not know any of this, Google does not have the names properly. Google claims this is all Idogan Road, it's not. The signage at the road says it's Cordillera Road. Also, it stops here at this corner. Further on, this has no name. So from this point on, down here through Idogan village, there is no name. And first when you hit St. Patrick, the name becomes Calia di Razzo. Um, excuse me for my pronunciation, I'm not Filipino. Um, then if you go further, this Cali di Razzo, it becomes Amethyst Road when you hit Irishville. Um, all these roads, uh, footway, steps, uh, tracks, all of this is an open street map and if it's named, the name is here, if it's not named, the name is not here, obviously, then we need to update that. The fact is, if the barangay or Purok leaders, if they know names on the map, which are not yet on the map, they can make, make a note about it or they can inform me that I will add the name. Um, this is really the most easiest thing in the world. but. I can show in another video how you can actually add this information as Puruk leader or as a barangay official. And um, yeah, you can correct this yourself. So unlike Google Maps, here you can correct everything yourself and you can literally enable and disable there. So in this case here, you just see the, the roads, uh, the names of the roads and steps with or without tactile paving so if you go here and here is some we don't have tactile paving if you go here um, towards the city here the golden part we can switch that on and off you can see here along Alpidio Carina Highway here this area 
you can see when I switch it on and off, that's the tactile paving. So we mapped that already. Um, that's not done at the whole of the city. I don't have time to do the whole city myself, of course. And th this is where the barangays and the poorer leaders come in. All of you can contribute to the map of the city and all of you can use it in an application like this. QGIS is for free. We're using this at the government and almost all offices. Every single barangay can use it. It's for free as a freeware from the Netherlands. And um, it's well maintained. It's always up to date. It's actual. Um, the open street map, it keeps getting improved right now. We are with three mappers here in Baguio. I'm, I'm the most uh, active contributor in Baguio, but there are two others who regularly help me with mapping. And uh, of course, if the, if the government assists us as well, it goes only better and better. Um, we can disable all of this. So th this is basically the infrastructure. You can also group this, by the way, so then it's uh, easier to maintain. Um, you can also click on the right way, then you can reload it. Uh, you can also say, make permanent, then you're saving it locally, this data, which means you don't even need the internet then. You can store that information locally. In fact, even this tile here, this is the tile server, the city itself can host their own tile server at the IT center of the city and uh, then all you need is local internet really. Um, yeah, so let's now go to something other. This is the, uh, these are the boundaries here. So this is the official city boundary from the assessor office. This is uh, on the open street map. Then the dark blue these are the uh, official barangay boundaries from the assessor office. And then you have the poor boundaries here. The poor boundaries are partially mapped by myself, partially based on information I got from several barangays. I did a request to every single barangay in Baguio to provide these boundaries. Unfortunately, most barangays did not respond. Um, about two dozen did respond, but again, it's a lot of work, so I haven't gotten through all of that. I did by now seven or eight barangays, but um, it would, of course, be great if all the barangays would provide that information so we can put prop this properly on the map. Um, this is supported by our mayor, Mayor Magalong. and um, this is supported by the CEO. The CEO uses OpenStreetMap. The assessor office uses OpenStreetMap. The Baguio Smart City Center uses OpenStreetMap. So OpenStreetMap, we use it everywhere, but we can even use it a lot more if everyone and all the offices, everyone in the city starts supporting it and give feedback and input into the map. Um, especially, I can't make it easier for you. If you give me the data, I will do that for you. If I don't have to walk to every single barangay hall and spend one or two hours there to wait for the information to be handed out, going to every barangay hall is again one hour, going back home is again one hour. So I live in Irizan, so most areas in Baguio are far away from me. Um, it saves me a lot of time if all the barangays would simply provide me this information. I did an official barangay data request uh, signed by Mayor Magalo. Uh, I'm a volunteer for the Office of the City Mayor on the survey and data collection team. Um, I do this for the city as a hobby because I like doing this, because I love the city. I love the, the governance style of uh, our mayor. I, I really think he's great. That's, that's why I started to do this for the city. Um, but again, it's a lot faster if all barangays would simply unbureaucratically provide me the information. So these are the boundaries. And you can also enable here PURUK labels. So then you actually see here the PURUK names. We can disable the background so you see it a bit more clearly. So here you have all the PURUKs properly labeled, and at least for the barangays where I did it already. Uh, the interesting thing of this is also that you see here 
differences between the official data from the assessor office, this is what they use, and this blue here, that's on the line, what the barangay itself claims is their Borok. So what we do in OpenStreetMap, both of the data is valid. It's called physical reality. So that's what we do. The physical reality right now is that the dark blue line is the official boundary by the assessor office. But the light blue line is the official boundary by the barangay. So both is physical reality. We both put this on the map. The beauty is now, because of this is on the map, we actually see where our problems and as we all know putting our hat in the ground ignoring a problem it does not solve the problem we can only solve problems if we are aware of the problem and this is the beauty of OpenStreetMap we can enable and disable layers and then we see this these differences we see where there are problems so this is where we can correct the data and again, everyone can correct data on OpenStreetMap. So the beauty of this is, because everyone can also download it and upload it, the beauty is, once, for example, here, this boundary issue, the dark blue is like this, and the light blue is like this. So once this zone in between has been resolved, the moment it is, every single office in the city sees the solution. You only need to adapt this at a single location and all of the city automatically gets the updated information. There's no need for emails, there's no need to inform anyone um, other than it has been resolved. There's no need to do hard copies, there's no need to send emails with data because it's automatically there. So this is the beautiful thing and you see how easy it is for barangays. You can just enable and disable this data. So, I mean, you cannot make it easier, right? It's just a few buttons clicking. Um, furthermore, uh, we can also enable, for example, these Tarnet outposts. Again, I had not the time to put all of them. So, because I live in Irizan, it's basically here in this area where I walked around a lot. So here, when I passed a uh, Tarnet, then I put it on the map. That's how it is. Uh, but again, if the Puroks and the Barangays would provide me this information, and it's very simple, just put a marker on the map and tell me there is Purok whatever outpost and there is Purok whatever tunnel, and I'll put it on the map. Um, same with the Barangay holes. So you can disable then these, and you see the Barangay holes. So then you see here is Eros and Bar's Barangay hole, there is Penso proper barangay hall and the thing is you put the background again online and then you actually see very accurately where it is then we can disable this um, yeah if you enable this one here these are all the buildings in the city which have been mapped some inaccurately I have to admit some accurately, uh, but all of them have no address. So this is the status of the city right now. All of these buildings have no address. And this isn't even the whole of the city. Again, it's, it's not, uh, you can do a feature count here. So these are only 69,000 buildings, which means it's probably something like half of the city actually. So there's still a lot of work to do, obviously. Um, but the beautiful thing is, and this I did all myself manually, these are the house numbers which already have been mapped. Let's disable the background again. So here you see Scout Barrio. I did that already completely. Then, uh, wait, 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 where, where are we? Yeah, this is uh, near the Navy base. I just have to, I forgot the name already because it's already a long time ago I did that. Oh yeah, there's a poor 20 there. And if you switch on the background, there was a subdivision I believe. 
Yeah, Navy Base Polo Field, that's what the na name said there on the sign. Um, so this here, I did every single house here and house number in this area. Also here, I just walk randomly sometimes and then I map some house numbers. Here I randomly map some house numbers. Then here in Kamdas, I went with some students from, uh, from the Pine City National High School. And with the students, actually the students mapped this under my supervision, so this is what students did. And uh, this is something that could be done throughout the whole city, basically. Um, then here again, randomly I mapped here some house numbers. The, in my area I did a lot of house numbers, obviously. I also mapped all these steps and stairs here. And then here in Irizan, when I walked through the Barangay Hall, Sometimes I just take some deviations and then I map some house numbers. Uh, this is in Pork 1 of Irizan. Um, I'm not done here, I still have a lot of data here. I also have house numbers here, I collected that on pictures and notes I made. But this area is mostly also, also not mapped by me. And these are house numbers. Uh, we can actually count how many I did in the city now. I think there's 130,000 buildings in the city, 2,600 out of 130,000 in total. Then you have building references, let's disable this again. Uh, we can also disable that for the sake of argument. So if, if we don't know if a number is a house number or a lot number, which in this case is a city camp proper, I did not know that if this is actually a house number or a lot number, then you add a reference number. The reference number basically means it's a number that refers to this building, it refers to this building, but other than that you do not know what exactly it refers to. Then you use the reference number. Um, for addressing, for the couriers like Grab, etc., they use this. Actually, I should have mentioned this maybe in the beginning of the video. Grab, Facebook, all these companies, Microsoft, Apple Maps, they all use OpenStreetMap. So if you, as Barangay or Purok, update this map and help me mapping that, help the city, help the CEO, if everyone contributes, also all these commercial companies that rely on this data, they can use this data for couriers to find addresses, for food delivery to find addresses, for uh, trucks to find addresses. Obviously, we have a problem with congestion, right, in the city. So, if all drivers can easily find addresses, it makes it, of course, a lot easier for the drivers to get from A to B, which also means they won't clock the roads that much because they won't drive around sometimes not knowing where they have to go to. Uh, they don't stop along the road to ask for directions. They don't um, clock roads by parking there while they are trying to figure out where to go to. No, in fact, they can just go with the flow straight to where they need to go to because they know where they have to go to. And um, again, we need all your support for this. Then let's disable this. Oh, we can actually also here count this feature, that's 155. These are buildings which only have a lot number, which is, I think, only one. Yeah, there's only one. I don't even know where it is, somewhere on the map it is. You, you can actually disable this, enable. You spot it more easily. Yeah, so here it is. Let's see where it is. Oh, so that's in Duntogun, Barangay, okay. Well, this is just a building which I added once and I saw it says lot 10, but I have no other information about it. So I just added that. Uh, yeah, and these are buildings which have more than just house number and lot number, they have actually both. Um, and this is quite often in um, subdivisions. Subdivisions are not always accessible, which means I can also hardly go there and map that. But some subdivisions I can 
banter like this, Irish fill phase one, and here's Irish fill phase two. So in this case I could map here some buildings. Um, and here in total, these are 60 numbers. So if you take this together, that's 2,700, 2,800, let's say 2,800 in total, out of 133,000 buildings in Baguio, of which 60,000 have been mapped, but again, the 60,000 that have been mapped, it's partially wrong. Um, yeah, we can, for the overview, we can then disable everything, except the buildings. So these are the buildings with the house numbers in Baguio, which currently have been mapped, that's then about 2,800. Uh, you can enable this background here again. But all this information, that's the beauty of it. You as Barangay, you can work with this information. You, you can do literally anything with this information, what you want to do. And um, yeah, this is just a simple video where I want to show you what you can do with these presets. You can visualize information very easily. I don't want to drag this video anymore than I have to because it's already a long video. Uh, but there's really so much more, like I said, drainage canals. Um, you can also, actually for all these buildings here, you can actually reveal whole different information. For example, we go here on the house number. You can also say, well, I do not want to see the house number, I actually want to see the street of these buildings. Which buildings are along the street? You can now see which buildings here are along Saraling Sikap Road, which buildings are along Cordillera Road, which buildings are not along the Cordillera Road, which buildings belong to Ad Road, uh, here, Santo Nino Road or St. Anthony Street. So, and again, you can also change this again, this label. And you say, now I want to see these buildings. Which buildings, uh, what are, oh, which neighborhood do they belong to? Okay, that's a good one. You click apply, and now you see which poor or which. Um, yeah, also some sort of subdivision or village. So in this case, it's all Burok. Okay, then you can see, we can change that again and say which places do they belong to, if any, because not all actually belong to a place. And then it shows you here, these belong to Idagon village, This is then Lam An village, this is police village. And yeah, you can literally query for whatever you want. Um, for the barangays, for example, we can even query the um, Philippine Statistical Authority data. You can ask, uh, I'm not going into that in this video because that's a bit more complicated. But you can actually ask what was the population in 2008, what was the population in 2015, what was the population in 2021. All of this you can visualize, you can search for it. And um, yeah, at this point, we're now at half an hour, I'm going to stop this video. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show here what you can do, what you can visualize with OpenStreetMap. And literally, there's tons of more information. Please use this video and start using this and see what has to be updated on the map. Do we have addresses? Do you as Barangay have a map with addresses about the buildings? Do you have a map with street names? Do you have a map with the drainage? If you as Barangay have that, just provide it to me. I'm working as survey and data collector for the city. We put all of this on the map. 
and you get a huge database which all the officers can work with. If you want, I can also make a video to show you how you do that because to actually work on the map you use this application here. It looks uh, very complicated. In the beginning it was complicated. So here I enable or disable the satellite imagery. In the beginning it was complicated, but over time you really get the hang of it and it's really not that difficult. I can make tutorials, um, show how everything is to be done. Also traffic signs here, as you can see we put them on the map. Um, even, even such small things here, like this is a fire hydrant. Uh, here on the right side you see actually the diameter, the hydrant pressure, um, is it supplied by um, permanent water, what's the model number, what's the year of the manufacturer, who is the manufacturer, uh, what is the color of the hydrant, so the, the fire department, if they ever need, they actually know what to look out for. All of this is on the map and there is a lot more on the map. We go into tourism, we go into, um, uh, what's it called, museum, uh, parks, leisure centers, all of that is on the map and if it's not yet on the map it can easily be put on the map if all of you supply the information and we just put that on the map and once it's there you can use this beautiful little app here where you add more layers for specific search queries you have if you don't know, do not know how to do that I can easily make um, just like this here, this is a, a uh, preset, I can make a lot of presets here, presets not just for Barrio which is then about roads, boundaries, addresses and uh, government buildings like Tanas and Barangay Halls, but I can also make presets for the whole of the tourism industry, everything that is related to tourism, I can visualize that. I can also make a preset which shows you land use, what is commercial, what is residential, what is farmland, what is forest, what is grassland, um, which areas are flooded, where are rivers, where is the river which is intermittently, where is a permanent river, which are the areas where the river leaves its river banks and floods the area if there's too much water. Where are landslides? So all of this information we put on OpenStreetMap and with presets here, we can simply make a preset here, hazards. So you enable the hazards and then you get here layers with a hazard map for fire risk. Uh, which buildings are prone to collapse during earthquakes? Which buildings are at risk for typhoons? Which buildings are at risk for landslides? All of that we can put on OpenStreetMap but we need your support. We need the barangays, also other government offices to provide this information so we have a beautiful database which works both online and offline, which also works if there's no internet, which is automatically updated so if only one person updates it, the whole of the city, all the offices immediately get that update. This is the beauty of OpenStreetMap. So please people, support it. It's for your own good. I'm not doing this because I'm getting paid, because I'm not getting paid. I'm doing this because I love doing this. I love the city of Pavio. I love the government style of Mayor Magalang. I'm trying to be helpful. This is a good concept. It's great. There are a lot of engineers at the CEO who endorse this. There's a lot of people, smart, well-educated people at all government levels who agree this is a great concept and we should do this. I'm offering to do this as volunteer. There are, in fact, 3,000 volunteers in the Philippines who will be helping with putting data on the map. In Baguio alone, we are with three people who are now mapping. Hopefully that can be more, because again, also barangay officials, even Puruk leaders, basically everyone can contribute and help. Uh, so just go for it, because this is a one-time investment of time, not even money. All of this is for free. 
the open street map is for free the license is ODBL which guarantees forever and all future it's for free the provision of all the service is for free all the applications and programs it's all open source which means it's all for free it doesn't cost the government a thing all it costs is time but if we mobilize people time becomes not the limiting factor factor anymore if every single Purok leader while they are sitting in a Purok outpost on their laptop map a little bit about their Purok have let's say every week four or five hours within half a year the whole of the city is mapped every single address is there on the map this is a beautiful concept to get the people into the digital to get the city into the digital age. I cannot stress out how important it is for the government to have data available. So you don't search for data, you don't have to ask for data, it's simply there. It's very important for the government and I think you as government officials know this very well, how important it is that you have always automatically up-to-date information the moment a calamity happens the moment the problem is there the moment the question arises that you can say oh that road is there that house number is there that family is there that poor is there the hazard for this area is this high the risk for flooding is this high all of this data it's so important for the government so if the government wants no it, the government should use this because it's a huge opportunity but the opportunity only works if the government on all levels wholeheartedly supports it provides the data and we put it on the map or better to be said we put it in the database yeah so at this point i'm going to stop this video it's a long video um, i really hope that i'm able to convince all barangay captains, all Purok leaders of the importance of this and also of the benefit to themselves over time especially for future generations and if you do recognize the benefits if you do recognize the importance how important it is for the government to have data available about the city contact me let me know what data you have house numbers drainage canals, street lamps, where are steps, which steps are with cobblestones, which steps are made with concrete, which steps have handrails. All of this information we put on the map, just contact me and let me know that you're willing to contribute to this project. I'm putting my free time in it, I'm volunteering on it. Um, yeah, because I love the city, so I hope you love the city as much as I do, and I'm sure if you do, you will recognize the importance of this project, and you will wholeheartedly support this project, so we can get Baguio into the digital age, and let's make Baguio the pilot city of the Philippines, where we will be the first city in the Philippines that can say, look, we are 100% digital everything is already in the digital age and no one in Buggy has problems anymore everything just works uh, yeah at this point I'm going to conclude this video so uh, let's see how, how many response I get <laughs>